So you want to know what in the world is a Presbyterian? Well, grab a cup of coffee or maybe your favorite beverage. Stick around and you'll find out. Hi, I'm John Judson and I want to welcome you to this series of videos about what in the world is a Presbyterian. To put it simply, Presbyterians are Christians who believe certain things and govern themselves in certain ways. In this video, we're going to be talking more about how they govern themselves. Specifically, we're going to be talking about this thing called the session. So what is the session? The session is the ruling body of the congregation. It is composed of elders who are nominated by and elected by the congregation along with the ministers of word and sacrament or pastors who are installed in the church. Now the thing about elders in the Presbyterian Church is that elders are elected just like pastors are elected and they are ordained just like ministers are ordained and then they are installed for a particular period of service, normally three years with three rotating classes. Um, and so the session is composed of the ministers of word and sacrament and all installed elders. Now, you could also have what's called a commissioned ruling elder who could be uh, on session if that person has been commissioned by the presbytery uh, to moderate the session. Now, why is it called the session? I have to say, over all my years in ministry, I never really knew. But for these videos, I decided I would look it up. Well, it begins with the Latin word sedere, which means to sit. And then that word becomes sessio, again, to sit. And if you think about, if you know Spanish, sietete or German zetzenzi, they're from the same root, to sit. And so the session, uh, is the body who sits. Now, any of you who have ever sat through a session meeting or through committee meetings know you do a lot of sitting. But that's not the kind of sitting that's meant here. It is to sit in positions of uh, authority, leadership, and responsibility. Now, who moderates the session? Well, traditionally, it is the installed minister of word and sacrament in the in that congregation. Uh, if the church has no minister of word and sacrament, they're between pastors or they're not large enough to have a pastor, a presbytery will assign them a minister of word and sacrament who will come and moderate the meetings. Or again, you can have a commissioned ruling elder who is commissioned to that particular congregation by presbytery and that person has authority to moderate. And moderate simply means you help lead and guide the session through its work at its various meetings. Um, and all of this follows Robert's rules of order. We Presbyterians are nothing if we are not people who do things decently and in order. So what are the responsibilities of the session? Well, there are some fundamental responsibilities, some overarching responsibilities. And these include to govern and lead the congregation. And for me, what that also includes is casting a vision. If you're going to lead people, if a session is going to lead the congregation, it has to know where it's going. And so I believe that vision casting um, is a critical piece of what the session is supposed to do. Some sessions want to give that up to the pastor, but what they need to remember is that the pastor, though part of session, um, is just that, a part of session, and that the elders should be responsible for casting the vision and then helping to lead the congregation in living that vision out. The second thing they are supposed to do is to witness to the sovereignty and God's activity in the world. They're supposed to help people in the church see where God is at work in the world and in the life of the church. Finally, they are to help the congregation become a community of faith, hope, love, and forgiveness in Jesus Christ. They are to be 
transformational agents. And so the session has those responsibilities to lead, guide, vision the church, help the church be transformed and renewed. And how are they to do that? Well, the Book of Order puts it uh, this way in very reformed language. They're to make sure that the Word of God is rightly preached. In other words, that people hear what God wants them to do through the Scriptures. That the sacraments are rightly administered. Uh, that people are welcomed to the table and are transformed through the sacrament of communion. And finally, that the community is nurtured to be a community of loving disciples of Jesus Christ. So discipleship is part of what um, they're intended to do, is to help lead people to become disciples. Now, what are the specific duties of the session? Those are sort of the general overarching duties. The specific duties of the session begins, now let me say this, there are some things that only the session can do that they can't give over to a committee. So the specific things that only session can do is to receive and dismiss members. And um, this is something again that the session is supposed to do uh, whenever it is necessary. Um, and so, uh, session is the body that brings new members in, but also dismisses old, old members who have moved away. Um, you lead the church in being part of the higher councils of the church. In other words, you help send people to presbytery, and elders will go to presbytery or senate or general assembly or be active on presbytery committees, and session is supposed to be intentional about trying to recruit its members to be active in the larger and wider church. The session oversees the board of deacons. Uh, many churches don't have deacons, but deacons are those who are assigned to the ministry of compassion, and we'll have a video later that talks more about deacons, but the session oversees the board of deacons. The session is to serve in judicial matters. One of the hallmarks or marks of being a reformed church is exercising discipline. And it is the session who is sort of the court of the church, that if there's a complaint of one member against another in the life of the church, it is the session who will sit and uh, decide the matters and the issues. And just a reminder that the, the rules of discipline are not there to oppress people but they're there intended to restore people into the full life of the church. Finally, the session is to be the gatekeeper of theology, that they're supposed to say this curriculum is reformed, this curriculum is not reformed. These actions or things that are being taught are appropriate for Presbyterians or they're not. And so you're the theological gatekeepers of the church. Now, there are some things, though, that the session is responsible for that it can delegate to committees. Um, these are programs of education, nurture, and discipleship. Uh, you can have a discipleship committee or a Christian education committee, and you can ask that committee to oversee those programs, but the session ultimately is responsible for them. Second, you are to encourage, uh, the session is to encourage generosity and stewardship. Again. You can have a stewardship committee, but the session is finally responsible. The session employs administrative staff. Now, uh, meaning the session is ultimately responsible for hiring and firing for terms of uh, call being recommended to the congregation for pastors, but you hire and fire staff. And you can assign this to, say, a personnel committee or a staff relations committee, but ultimately, responsibility of the session. You care for the property. <laughs> you take care of your building and grounds, and most churches I know hand this off to either a property committee or to the trustees, some even to the deacons, though I'm not sure why, but they do. Um, but you're responsible for making sure that you have insurance on your property and that the property is maintained in good order so that people feel great when they come to visit your church. So how often does session meet? According to the Book of Order, session needs to meet at least quarterly. 
But most churches I've been a part of meet 11 times a year on stated meetings, meaning meetings that are held on a regular basis, taking July off, though some churches meet 12 months out of the year. And you can also, though, have what are called called meetings. These are meetings for specific purposes. Now, the thing about called meetings, one, you have to give people adequate time to be sure that they can be there. There has to be adequate notice. Second, you have to have an agenda that lays out everything that's going to be discussed. And the agenda has to go out before the meeting. You don't want people showing up and saying, oh, wait, I didn't know we were going to talk about this. And finally, in the called meeting, you can only talk about, discuss, and vote on things that are in the call for the meeting, meaning the agenda for the meeting. Those are, those are some things about called meetings. Now, what's a quorum? That's up to you. Every church is supposed to have a manual of operations. The session is supposed to have approved a manual of operations. And in the manual of operations, there should be a section about quorum. Quorum for called meetings, quorum for uh, stated meetings, quorums for congregational meetings. And so the quorum is up to you. Now, there are three roles, and, and this is like role books that the session is supposed to keep. These are active members, meaning people who are actively involved in the life and work of the church. Baptized members, these are children who have, or youth who have been baptized into the congregation but not yet confirmed. And then affiliate roles. Now, affiliate members are people who may be in the area going to college or for a short-term work assignment and want to be affiliated with a congregation but don't want to transfer their membership. And that's the affiliate roles. And those need to be uh, looked at and reviewed every year. And the roles, the active roles, are supposed to be reviewed at least annually. And the question asked, how many of these people are really active in the life of the church? They give or they participate or there's a reason that they can't be active. And then the roles should be regularly uh, clean, but that's, there's more discussion in the Book of Order about how to do that. Now, the session is also responsible for three registers. Uh, these registers are a listing of all the ordained and installed elders in the church, all ordained and installed deacons in the church, and all installed ministers of word and sacrament. You're supposed to keep those registers. Now, the last piece is finances. The session oversees the finances of the church. The session sets the budget. The congregation doesn't set the budget or vote on the budget. The session approves the budget. The session oversees the finances. The session makes sure that everything balances. The session makes sure that it has adequate funds um, to pay its bills. The session should look monthly uh, to be sure that the financial, uh, financial house of the church is in order. Uh, the session is responsible for making sure that there is there are good financial controls, uh, that, that the finances of the church are not set up so that someone can steal from the church. And part of doing this is that you are supposed to have an annual review of the books, financial review. You don't necessarily have to have an annual audit, but you're supposed to, ha you're supposed to have a financial review. Now, sessions that do this, um, things tend to work out well. Sessions that forget to keep track of finances and don't do an annual review, I've watched far too many find themselves in difficult financial straits and people have stolen from them. Um, they've embezzled. And so it's critical that the session take its fiduciary responsibility seriously. The last thing having to do with finances is that the session authorizes special offerings. The PCUSA has four special offerings that are taken during the year, and the session can approve one of those, two of those, three, or all four. 
That is completely up to the session. And actually, though I said that was the last thing, um, one critical piece of this that I didn't mention, and that is that the session sets the benevolence budget of the congregation. The session decides where the money goes. Does it all go to staff, to, to buildings, to missions, or does it go to the wider church? The wider church can never tell the session, you must give us X amount of money. That is a responsibility of the session. I hope this helps that you now know a little bit more about session as the Board of Elders that sits in positions of responsibility, leadership, and authority. I hope today you find something to be grateful for and that you enjoy part of God's good creation after you finish your cup of coffee or your uh, other liquid refreshment. Have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.